Hi everyone, my name is Michael Chang. In this video, I will present our oral presentation at the iClear 2022 workshop on the elements of reasoning, objects, structure, and causality. One of the main driving questions behind this workshop is, how do we capture the structure of the physical world with our learning algorithms in a scalable way? The first step people often take to concretize this question is to ask how to build learning algorithms that, that learn to represent objects. Current object-centric models, such as slot attention, decompose a scene into separate representations of its constituent objects using an iterative procedure. But the problem is that these methods are generally difficult to optimize, as we can see by the growing Jacobian norm in red. In this talk, my goal is to convince you that it is useful to conceptualize object representations as stable points of a fixed point procedure. The way I'm going to do that is to show that this insight enables us to take advantage of implicit differentiation techniques, which you see in blue, to stabilize training and improve learning performance. This is what we will talk about. The problem is difficulty of optimization. The question is how to solve that problem. Our key insight is to view object-centric models as fixed point procedures, and the actionable consequence of this insight is to use implicit differentiation to stabilize training. By the end of this talk, I will attempt to answer how we can model object-centric models as fixed point procedures, how to apply implicit differentiation to object-centric models, whether training with implicit differentiation does stabilize training, whether implicit differentiation improves performance, and whether this benefit generalizes across datasets, architectures, and tasks. I want to start off by posing the question of why it has been difficult to train object-centric models. And I'd like to suggest that the reason is that object-centric models are actually meta-learning algorithms, which thus inherit the difficulties of differentiating through optimization procedures. Objects are interesting because they reflect two very general properties about the causal structure of the physical world. The first is symmetry. The same physical laws apply to all objects. The second is independence. Objects can be locally acted upon without affecting other objects. Therefore, these are the properties we want our object representations to satisfy. Mixture models offer an elegant way for satisfying the properties of symmetry and independence because the generative process for standard mixture models treats mixture components as both symmetric and independent. This motivates modeling each sensor measurement, such as a pixel, as having been generated by a mixture model where there is a mixture component for each object. This is the general approach taken by a large body of work in object-centric modeling. But if we want to infer from observation such a set of representations that are a priori symmetric and independent, that we also need a mechanism for breaking symmetry when we perform inference to assign the different representations to different parts of the scene. The way to do this for inference in mixture models is to break the symmetry with a random initial guess that iteratively gets refined, as in standard clustering with expectation maximization. With these object-centric models, it is no different. These methods therefore learn a clustering algorithm that gets unrolled during execution time for each observation and are trained by backpropagating through the entire unrolled computation graph. These figures are taken from the slot attention paper, and from this point forward, I will focus on the slot attention module, as it is the latest in the line of these iterative approaches. One problem that we notice, however, is that optimization becomes more unstable as training progresses. We can see this in the uncontrolled growth of the J Jacobian spectral norm of the slot attention cell in the latest of these models, SLATE, from Singh et al. 2022, which you can see in red. So the main question is, how might we solve the problem of training instabilities in these object-centric models? One hypothesis for the reason for these optimization difficulties is that backpropagating through the unrolled optimization, which all prior methods do, creates instabilities as training progresses. So maybe if we can train these methods without backpropagating through the entire iteration process, we may be able to stabilize training. We observe that these representations generally appear to remain relatively stable as the number of inference iterations increases. So what this suggests is that we can treat object-centric models as learned fixed-point procedures. If we can, 
we may be able to borrow tools developed for stabilizing the training of other learned fixed point procedures to solve our problem. The structural similarities between slot attention and the expectation maximization algorithm suggests that slot attention might converge to a fixed point. But this is not obvious from the implementation because slot attention introduces several components that make it different from vanilla expectation maximization that we do not yet know how to analyze theoretically. Empirically, however, we can see that the forward residual of the slots remains relatively bounded, which suggests that slot attention can be considered an instance of a deep equilibrium model. Deep equilibrium models are neural networks that solve for a fixed point as an intermediate step Z star of their computation graph. One property of these models is that they can be trained with implicit differentiation. Rather than backpropagating through the entire fixed point iteration, it is possible to just compute gradients with the implicit function theorem without needing to backprop through the iteration. Can we use relative recently developed techniques for implicit differentiation to stabilize training? In the rest of this talk, I will talk about how we go about testing this hypothesis. The first question is straightforward. The object representations are the fixed points. In the context of slot attention, these fixed points are the slots, which approximate the parameters of the mixture components of the underlying mixture model. Now I'll talk about how we can apply implicit differentiation to object-centric models. Recognizing that slot attention is an instance of a deep equilibrium model expands the design space of training object-centric models beyond what is currently done which is simply to iterate the slot attention cell during the forward pass and backprop through the unrolled iteration in the backward pass. Now, we can use any roots finding solver to find the fixed point for the forward pass and use any method to directly compute the implicit gradient in the backward pass without storing any intermediate activations in the rollout before the fixed point. The challenge is in computing the inverse Jacobian term here, which is expensive. So prior works have either approximated the term using a Neumann expansion or used a root finding solver to solve another fixed point system. As we can see, compared to the standard way of training slot attention, when we tried different combinations of solvers and approximations, most of the approaches for implicit differentiation trained much more stably than vanilla slot attention. The method we found to be best in our context is to keep the forward iteration as before and use the first order Neumann approximation of the implicit gradient. This approximation is not only simplest to implement with one additional line of code that just truncates the backpropagation, but also has the lowest time and space compl complexity of all the methods we tried. That is the approach we will use for the rest of the talk. And now let's see in what ways our method helps stabilize training. We use the latest method that builds upon slot attention, the Slate Architecture by Singh et al. 2022. The Slate Architecture uses a discrete VAE to tokenize the image. It then uses slot attention to cluster the tokens and a transformer decoder to reconstruct the tokens. These experiments use the dataset created by Singh et al. that augments the clever dataset with a mirror. We will now see how implicit differentiation removes the need for optimization tricks such as learning rate warmup, gradient clipping, and learning rate decay. If we remove learning rate warmup, both the implicit and vanilla versions have higher validation loss, but the learning curves for the implicit version achieve better loss and converge closer together. If we remove gradient clipping, the validation curve for the vanilla version eventually overfits whereas the validation curve for the implicit version learns faster and does not overfit. In fact, without gradient clipping, the Jacobian norm for the vanilla version begins to explode as training progresses, and this is reflected in the large gradient magnitudes of the slots layer norm in the vanilla version compared to those in the implicit version. Lastly, if we remove learning rate decay, the implicit version still exhibits more efficient learning than the vanilla version. Now let's ask whether better optimization also leads to better results. When we look at the reconstruction quality, we observe that the vanilla version sometimes misses objects, changes their size, or changes their colors, whereas the implicit version generally matches the ground truth much more closely. In terms of mean squared error, the implicit version has almost a 7x improvement over its vanilla counterpart. Lastly, Let's ask whether these results generalize to other datasets, architectures, and tasks. For the ShapeStacks dataset, 
we see that the implicit version of slate appears to attend to the salient objects as va its vanilla counterpart does. Instead of the slate architecture, we also tested whether using implicit differentiation still infers meaningful object representations using the original slot attention encoder and decoder from Locatella et al. 2020. And it does. Lastly, we asked if implicit differentiation helps with property prediction of objects beyond just reconstruction. And the quantitative performance of our implicit version is much better than its non-implicit counterpart. As promised, I have answered the questions I set out to answer in this talk. Where do we go from here? For one, the qualitative behavior for the implicit version is not completely the same. While the attention masks for vanilla slate appear to be more localized to each object, the attention masks for implicit slate appear to be more smeared out. At first, we could not understand why this was happening, but then some folks at generallyintelligent.ai pointed out that the reason for this could be that the implicit version is learning to not only capture the objects, but also their shadows. This is quite interesting, because it shows that the implicit version is not merely doing color segmentation, but may be reasoning about how objects interact with light. But the trade-off is that the implicit version appears to create a stronger dependence among the slots. Here I'm showing what the reconstruction looks like if we render using fewer and fewer slots. We can see that when there are still many other slots as context, with our method, deleting a slot corresponds to a clean deletion of the corresponding object in the reconstruction. But as we remove more and more slots, we can see that the implicit version has less coherent compositions than its vanilla counterpart. It could be that backpropagating through the unrolled iterations provides some form of regularization to the model, which using implicit differentiation removes. So there's still some work to do to understand and improve this trade-off. In conclusion, in this talk, I argue that it is useful to conceptualize object representations as stable points of a fixed point procedure. And I defended my argument by showing the, be the benefits of training slot attention with implicit differentiation. The connection we made during this talk between object-centric models and deep equilibrium models also revealed various other properties about object representations that have connections to other areas of machine learning. So perhaps instead of thinking about object representations as static pieces of data, like bounding boxes or vectors of attributes as we usually do, we might want to consider thinking about them as adaptive states of a dynamic process. That's it for this talk. Thanks to both my advisors, Tom Griffiths and Sergey Levin for a fun project. Come check out our work at the iClear 2022 Workshop on Objects, Structure, and Causality.